you have to understand that we are r basically in the middle of a uh, uh, of the venue they set up a, a, a yeah how to say how to speak um, it's a conventional set up restaurant in this morning with some volunteers as guests and uh, it's it's loud it's crowdy so we're going to to try to make the best out of it so I hope you can hear me correct and um, yeah let's uh, I think we're ready uh, team Toby is oh no it's not team Toby it's team Erasers and Pumas who are actually doing uh, the challenge I think uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's difficult to see for me from from this angle. The idea is basically that the robot goes into the restaurant, a guest waves at the at the robot, and when the robot detects a waving guest, it will move to towards the guest. It asks him what it wants to drink, and it gets the drink. So, that's the easy job. Of course, to do this, it has to uh, remember who the guest is. So you need a good facial recognition, and also it has to understand that the the word with the which is ordered is actually uh, a specific drink that it has to get. And uh, I'm not sure it's only drinks, maybe also food, but uh, we'll see what is ordered. Right, right now the robot is having some difficulties understanding the order and it has to be repeated several times it is team toby uh, which is now in the, in the arena i'm sorry for my confusing so as you can see, one of the Team Toby members is helping by shouting the order at the robot. So apparently, the noise is is uh, is, a, is a big big problem. So uh, Arpit is also laying cables uh, to prepare for the robot. Arpit, just a quick question: Is the noise an issue uh, today here? Uh, yeah, for some teams, yes, uh, but not for us. We have okay, so Arpit says that the noise can be an issue, but they think they are confident that uh, it will not be an hindrance for Team Tech United who is actually, I think it, they are 11th in line so one of the very last teams uh, to, to get into action so yeah, people uh, watching from the very very start uh, it, it will be a long challenge it can take up to 2 to 3 hours so um, I would suggest that uh, if you don't have a coffee yet, go grab a coffee maybe even s make a pot of coffee uh, it gets uh, some snacks ready at your desk and just yeah, sit back and uh, watch this challenge. And I think that was the end of the challenge for Team Toby. Uh, Matthijs, did you watch the challenge of Team Toby just now? No, I didn't. Ah, okay, unfortunately. I think it's a shame or not? Well, I was hoping that you could uh, shed some light on uh, exactly what went wrong. I think the order could not be understand correctly but uh, I don't think it it was uh, going to grab the order uh, something went wrong uh, moving back so is an uh, I just asked Arpit he says the noise might be an issue for teams not for you though but what what how difficult is it for the robot to understand speech uh, in a noisy environment like this that's very difficult uh, we have been struggling with that uh, for a long time many years and recently we, we have switched to a different uh, implementation uh, for speech recognition and that's really bust in noisy environments so that's that's so important in these challenges um, there's a downside to it uh, 
we can't generate the models on the fly so we really have to know what kind of um, sentence we're gonna hear um, so that's the downside but what we get in return very robust in noise environments it's so important yeah but in a, in a in a very defined challenge like this you can basically write out like 100 sentences which you might hear yeah you can have some different variations but the the basis is always going to be the same there's going to be an order uh, so there are some some parts of the sentence that's always going to be there uh, and that's those are the important parts um, so that's easy to do for such challenge different challenges it's it's much more difficult okay yeah thank you so we're getting ready for the next for the next team So I'm not sure if you can hear it, but the robot is it's starting the challenge by actually saying uh, I am looking for any waving customers and at that point you can see people starting waving and then when it actually detects a waving customer which is now it's basically looking at the completely wrong side now it's looking at the right side it says, I see a hand raised, I think. Let's see if we can zoom on the screen. It will be a little difficult. Let me check. Yeah, the lighting is not perfect. So, yeah, you can see the screen a little, but it's difficult to, to read out. But on the screen, the instructions are also, can be read. And I think this robot has a little, uh, a little problem detecting the waving customer. I am finding, or I'm looking for a waving customer. And again, it's trying to detect the people waving. And I don't think it will be able to actually detect the customers. I think the referee is also trying to assist here, but I don't think that the robot was able to start the... Let me see. And that's the end of the challenge for this team. Unfortunately, I don't have the list of actual teams participating. For me, it's difficult uh, to determine exactly which team is, is, uh, is participating. Um, But uh, yeah, though nevertheless, it's uh, it's nice to see that all the robots also 
look different. So it's not just the the uh, league that United is participating in, but it's also the the other leagues. So to avoid any any confusion. you made a comment on the on the robot what did you say <laughs> i think it looks kind of scary oh, why do you think it looks scary <laughs> it looks like an evil robot from i don't know wally or something <laughs> is that because it's just an arm <laughs> it's just an arm and it's the hand has got like a camera on it that <laughs> look like eyes i always think it's so funny that we uh, try to see the, the the human side in the robot or try to have a feeling for for the machine and we all know it's uh, just a machine but yeah. we immediately have a, a certain feeling about it and in this case you felt you felt scared and i can understand because if, a, if an arm was coming at you to ask you if you wanted something to drink i would probably also run away <laughs> Yesterday we saw one of the general uh, uh, um, of the standard platform league. One of the robots load the dishwasher, and he w he had a knife, and it was driving out very dangerously with the knife as well. So. So as you can see, this uh, this robot is uh, holding a basket. So in this league, you can uh, add uh, stuff to the robot. Uh, you are, uh, yeah, it, it's basically designed by the team. And in this case, it's uh, holding a basket for the purpose of bringing the drinks. So it will ask the customers later if it succeeds in picking up the order to place the or to pick out the the order from the basket and. It will ask the referee to place the order inside the basket, but it still has to determine what the drink is and tell that to uh, either the, the bartender or the referee and the customer. So I think the robot succeeded in uh, recognizing the customer, getting his drink order, and then it will go to the bartender. Now it will ask for the drink. The bartender puts the drinks in the basket. And the robot will try to find the guest again. But what has happened? The guest has moved. Oh no. So let's see what happens. So the, the, there is a guest waving now for a drink, for an order, and the robot is moving there. Okay.
And now the bartender is helping the Robert again with his drink. So let's see if the robot is able to deliver the drinks. The order is being removed now from the basket. And I think that went ready, uh, rather well. And it now will move to, no to the next guest. But still, uh, the guest has still left his table. And that was a very successful challenge, I think, for this, uh, this team. Very good. The robot did not linger in the restaurant looking for a guest. So that's very good. I think this was uh, the first uh, example of a team that uh, succeeded in, I think, most of the parts, maybe even all the, all the parts of this challenge. And uh, for the other robots and also for the general uh, leagues. Standard platform leagues, it will be the same. So, uh, again, uh, Tessa is swooning over the robot because it's wearing a jacket. And as uh, I think our pet explained yesterday, we try to make our own robot also a little more friendly by putting in, uh, putting on a team jersey and giving it a name, so it becomes a part of the team. And it's a, it's a, it's a whole different uh, scientific area, the psychology of, of machines and robots. But it's. But it's uh, really nice to see. Hel uh, uh, Harry, everybody can hear you on the live stream eh, if you talk so loud. Harry van der Loo just, uh, just arrived and everybody knows immediately. And the robot has now started his challenge. I'm just uh, quickly looking at Tessa if she thinks the robot is scary. It does have a black mask. Eh? It looks like it's robbing the place uh, with the with the with the bivak muts. I don't know the English word for bivak muts, but uh, yeah. Again, guests are waving. As you can see on the left. Two, two people are, are actually waving and yeah, the robot is moving. So we did detect something. Oh, will it collide with the table? It did collide with the table and that means an immediate stop for, uh, for this, uh, this team. And I think this is one of the most difficult parts of this challenge. So the teams uh, heard like it was, I think it was 9.05 and they heard uh, where, the, where the arena was. And at uh, 9.06, the first team basically had to be ready to enter the arena. So there is no, no time for no teams because the teams are all in line and the refs are checking the teams. Nobody is allowed to work on the robot or do anything. And the teams have to go in basically blind. So the robot has to map the arena. It has to understand the situation it's in and determine if it's seeing tables, chairs, people. And uh, because it's a very defined challenge, yeah, it knows it's in a restaurant, so it will know to look for tables and chairs, but there are still some, some difficult obstacles. For example, there are no walls in this restaurant. And that might seem trivial, but in a normal restaurant, it's, you have walls and you know where you cannot drive. So for the robot, it might be difficult to get a, an actual sense of the, of the room itself. And I think for now, they define the restaurant that it's really centered 
uh, or, or at least the, the, the people are in a, in a circle so the robot can really work from one center and I think that will help a lot but uh, it's time for, for the next team to start the challenge and this robot is looking everywhere except for the guests The referee is telling him to go to the guests. Referee acting as bartender. The robot is talking to the bartender, so I can hear him talk, but I cannot make out the words, unfortunately. can make out the words but for me it's not not readable and now the robot has gotten a command and is look for guests searching for customers yes guests start waving again to guests And the robot has actually found a customer which was waving so that's good and now the customer will start ordering a drink Please repeat your order so it cannot make out the the speech. And it has taken the order and it's moving to the kitchen now to get the order this guest is also <laughs> very happy that a robot took his order and now the robot will move to the referee or bartender again I don't think the robot is giving clear clear commands to so the referee is sticking to a specific set of rules and uh, the robot has moved to the bartender and the team says that the bartender has to ask the robot what it wants but the referee says no I, I didn't get a command to ask anything so now the rule book is reviewed live uh, so the ref is I think he's in doubt of what to do and he's waiting the team is not happy sorry for the noise there are robots being driven around the arena
And now the robot is going to grab the drink. There we go. It has tried to determine the drink, or maybe it's a food. I think it's uh, actually uh, ordered a peach, so it's a food. I'm talking about drinks, but the order is a, f is a fruit, in this case a peach. And now it has grabbed the peach. It has grabbed the peach, okay. And now it has to move the peach to the customer. Now it's detecting if it has the peach. So I think it will need another order. Here we go, moving the arms. I think it will try to grab it. Uh, is it a tomato? I think it's a tomato. It grabbed the tomato. Ooh, and it lost the tomato. It was everything was just going okay. Is it an orange? It's an orange. I was corrected by somebody who has good eyes that it is actually an orange. And there the robot moves with the, its non-orange and its true peach towards the customer hello customer let's see if we can find the screen here And it delivered the order very well. And now it's supposed to also deliver the virtual orange, <laughs> which it's not gripping at the moment. Oh, and now it's actually manipulating, manipulating the environment, which is not allowed. So the referee pressed the emergency button. Very unfortunate. And the arms are being folded back into place I think all in all it was uh, not a bad challenge but there was things uh, that g went wrong and the referee did have some confusion about the rules so uh, there will be a discussion I think about the points of this team later on but uh, yeah, still not the, the league of Tech United, so I don't think that we will be looking into those points. And now we are waiting uh, for the next team to get ready.
so uh, you can see that the next robot is holding a, a, a bucket or a plastic bucket. So it will have to communicate with the bartender about picking up the drinks. It's now uh, making his rounds to determine the arena, but it's looking at the wrong, wrong area right now. Um, that can be an issue with human detection because there are a lot of humans standing around this arena at the moment. I switch uh, microphones, I hope that you can still hear me uh, correctly. But that gives me some freedom uh, to move uh, around. going to try to get a comment from the team uh, to see uh, what, the, what the issue just was. Hi, can I have your ask you a quick question? Okay. So I think there was some confusion on the rulebook with, uh, with the bartender. Can you explain what happened? Uh, yeah, well, in the rulebook it specified that we have a minute to instruct the barman, or the robot has a minute to instruct the barman, and it clearly stated the barman to place the items one by one in front of the robot, but uh, there was some confusion because the barman was remembering a past rulebook where this was not the specified scenario. And so there was some conflict because we expected the barman to do a certain behavior, but he didn't do it. Uh, it'll have to be cleared up now. Okay, do you, do you think it will have, there will be discussion afterwards or was the challenge for you for this part okay in the end? There might be. I think it was okay in the end since uh, in the end the barman still uh, put down the items in front of the robot and the intended behavior clearly worked. Uh, we failed at other parts, so that's on our part. Yeah. Okay, thank you for, for clearing it no up. Problem. Have a nice day. So we're uh, waiting for the next robots to find the waving guest. The robot is either thinking very long about serving these guests or cannot find the waving guests. They are sitting in a pretty awkward line right behind each other, so it might be confusing to see two waving arms and one person. And the robot is now moving outside of the arena. This will be an issue. Uh, Matthijs, uh, are you allowed to move outside? No, this is done by the, by the team itself. Uh, they, uh, they stopped the challenge. Oh, the challenge was already stopped, okay. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm really sure. Seems to be moving uh, on its own, but okay, yeah. Unfortunately, next team getting ready. So uh, are we starting the, uh, the Toyota robots right now? Is this, uh, yeah, so. So, Kinaida will be asked to get into line. And we will now be starting with the, the H. Oop, the HSR robot for Toyota. Right and there we go, that's the first one. So just to uh, repeat myself, the top six of the standard platform uh, contestants are now doing this challenge. And uh, of course, at the end of the day, uh, after any afternoon, there will be uh, some more challenges coming. But um, at the end of the day, only the top two teams will move to, to the finals for tomorrow. 
So yeah, it's uh, it's important to to grab a lot of points to make sure that you get into the top two. We do know that this challenge is an important one because you can gain uh, two thousand points. And um, just to quickly walk you through what what points they can get. So if they detect a waving customer, they already get points. 100 points, 200 points. Um, if they reach a customer uh, without any additional guidance from any team, they get another 200 points. Um, if they take and serve an order, they get uh, 600 points. Uh, uh, sorry, 1200 points. Uh, I, I'm a little confused because the robot will be doing this twice which means that the points are doubled so in the end just finding a guest and serving it the guest will already be worth uh, 1600 points if you do that twice now there are some additional points that can be gained which which is if you uh, use an unattached tray to transport the goods but i think that for these robots that will be uh, difficult uh, that would mean that you have to grab the drink yourself but uh, yeah, let's see uh, if, uh, if the teams uh, try this. And I think the guest was detected. And now they're trying to hear the robot. It's very difficult to hear. It's actually driving into the guest. It's driving into the guest, yeah. Unfortunately, that was a stop. And the team has to remove the robots. So there are some uh, um, penalties that you can get. So if you not make eye contact while you take the order, then you get uh, subtracted some points. Seems trivial, but uh, looking straight at the face uh, does seem to be important. Even if you have a normal conversation with a human, you also want to, to watch or look you in the eyes. And um, there are also points deducted if you are uh, if the robot is being guided to a table or if you have to ask the bar tender to give you an object um, if the guest needs to take the object from the tray or from the robot's hand then you get also uh, deducted some points so all in all there are a lot of points to be gained but to make it a little more easy uh, you can also give back some of the points by asking the robot and then I think if you if you go for the easy way it will be a max a thousand points something like that if you do it twice uh, I know that Tech United will go for the maximum amount of points so that means that it will grab the drink from the table and put it on the table or give it to the customer so yeah let's see how the next team uh, will do And here we go. So the, the drinks are being prepared. The bartender is still working on uh, getting everything ready for the referee. Customers are waving. Mm -hmm. 
This robot is holding a basket, which means it will ask the bartender and the guests to put in or take out the, the drinks or the orders. And so this team has already chosen not to go for the maximum amount of points. The robot is asking a lot of things and I barely can make it out. around as well for the waving guests. There are two guests waving. Uh, still having some difficulties determining where the customers are. Oh. And they had to stop challenge. Next up, Team Tech United. They will be getting ready. see also the team tech United also has a, a basket so they won't be going for the full amount of points not taking the risk there's a lot depending on this challenge right now and here we go hero is entering the arena asking his questions and doing a thing it's now looking for the waving guests and I see one two guests waving in the bar tender for instructions and the bartender just gave those instructions to Hero so now it will start moving and it has found his first first guest it is asking something it successfully got the order and now it's moving to the bartender to grab the order so the next uh, the next customer is uh, located a little more difficult it's more uh, yeah, to the back and it has to move a little uh, between uh, between the tables ah, ah but just rushed over here let me just Your mic. I, have, I have my own so we can yeah. more easily communicate yeah that's good that's looks perfect. good right yeah it's, uh, it's a good start I would say uh, we, we got the first order right we detected the, the person who was trying to place the order also showed it to the referee with a picture of the person okay nice the order to yeah. the person back so I just was reading the rule book I saw that you get uh, points abstracted if you ask the bartender to put the drinks in the basket or ask the customer to pu pu to take them out? No, we don't get uh, any L points abstracted for that. You don't? Oh, I, I just looked at the rule book that Matthijs sent me and it said uh, that you get points uh, subtracted. So I was wondering why most teams 
have this basket and not just grip it with the uh, with the arm but would uh, it be possible to grab the drink itself and put it on the table that's uh, extremely difficult uh, because uh, typically a customer always places an order with multiple objects then having a having a robot run back and forth mm. uh, yeah just costs too much time and a lot of times uh, the robot is just not able to like lift the weight of the object by itself so it's always better to just place it in the basket now it's looking for the second person okay but i i, I don't think that oh yeah the person is waving all the way on the right yeah so it's very difficult to hear the robots uh, is that because the volume it cannot be any higher or you're not allowed to cross uh, a certain no, the, volume the, level the volume is maximum it's just that it's too far away from here and yeah. uh, the, the area is quite open yeah there's a lot of noise huh yeah there's a lot of noise the referee is checking what's going on but uh, i think hero is now trying to find the guest yeah so hero located the guest and then it asks the referee uh, if he can go and take the order from this person and the ah, referee okay. needs to say either go take the order or just wait here all right, all right. So told and the, uh, yeah, let's told see. Hero let's see how move. he moves here between the tables. Ooh, that's nice. Oh, that's super nice. he's moving right. In yes, he finds the extra guest. So touching an object is an immediate stop, or yeah, touching you, an object yeah, is an immediate stop. Okay, so this is uh, all right. Very nice. Let's see if it gets the, the order right. The customer is now or ordering his food or drink. Yeah, it got it the order right. Yes. This is the second correct order. All right. And now it has to move back again, taking some risk with the basket. Yeah. Move and is OK. It, it managed to navigate back. OK. I see I see Matai smiling. It's the first uh, <laughs> today. So <laughs> something must be going right. Eh? Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, yeah, to see him that excited about this, yeah, of course. It's time for you to take the second order. So it's not looking at the bartender. Is that an, is that a problem for points? No, that's not a problem, not a problem for points. For because points. it's okay. just standing to the next to the kitchen table, uh, the kitchen bar. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's just uh, stand over there and ask the bartender to place the order in its basket. At least that's what the rules say. So uh, there has never been any question about uh, looking at the bartender while taking the order. And here is moving again. Yeah, we always uh, give certain amount of time for the bartender to place the order. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's, that's typically, a, I think, 30 odd seconds. Let's see if he can make it through the maze again. Oh, and there this, uh, is some smooth navigation <laughs> over there. <laughs> this customer is very, uh, very thirsty. It's. Uh, yeah, and it's, uh, you it's see it's the shouting quite to happy the. With the robot trying to navigate through this maze. Yeah. So yeah, uh, whatever we hear is also can it be read on the screen, right? Or yeah, is it, it can different? Be on the uh, no, it's the oh, same, it's thing. same instruction. Yeah. And I think the customer got his coke. He's happy. I think he also got a lemon with the coke. Ah, we got a lemon with the coke. Yeah. A co ah, maybe he wanted a lemon coke. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Well, look at Matthijs. Matthijs uh, is very maybe happy. Maybe he wants to make a buck with it. Ah, that's also possible. Yeah. Okay, now yes, the final I think order. Uh, it's, it's time for the final order. Okay, and do you know, uh, because I only saw two guests waving, do you know... Uh, there are only two guests waving, right? There are two orders. I think this is it. This is it. Yes, this is it. Ah, grand applause. Standing ovation. Good job, Arpit. Okay, Arpit rushing back to help the team with the robot. And we have a beautiful shot from the back of Matthijs. Sorry, Matthijs. Bad, bad editing on my part. All right, so I think we are we are happy with this challenge. Let's see how uh, how the competitors will be doing. Next.
his team is moving into the arena. And uh, let's see uh, how it will be going. go challenge has started for the next team Guests are waving, and the robot will now try to find his way towards the guest. Bartender is trying to make sense of what a robot is asking. Ah, okay. The in this case, the referee or the bartender is bringing the robot to the table. Ah, uh, Matthijs is also now here. Matthijs, we were joking that you were actually smiling the first time uh, maybe the today. <laughs> I think you were very happy with what happened just now. Uh, this was a perfect run. This is what we we were hoping for, um, and. For the robot to for hero to perform in such a way, uh, it's it's amazing. I was just talking to Arpit about the, the the points that you can collect, and uh, you sent me a rule book. And in the rule book, it said that if you ask the bartender to put the drinks in the basket or ask the customer to take it out, you get points deducted. But Arpit said that's not true. So, uh, what's your view on that? Uh, I have no clear view on the rule book and the scores uh, for this challenge. Um, I know there is either positive points for manipulating or negative points for not manipulating, um, but we were not planning to manipulate. Um, uh, other parts of this challenge um, provide us way more points. That's what we focused on and that's what worked. So we're really happy about that. Yeah, I think especially the navigation between these tables, which is difficult. It looked very, uh, very smooth. Thanks, yeah, yeah. So uh, we start without any map here. So we don't know where the tables are. We don't know where to expect chairs. Um, so that's a difficult situation for the robot. Uh, but still, uh, we are able to avoid all uh, collisions, uh, even in the, the close, uh, in the close areas. Uh, so that's really nice. So we, let, let me then ask you maybe a stupid question from somebody who has no idea. Why do you not do this in the arena? Because in the arena you are testing and mapping and doing everything and it still collides with the table. But now it looks smooth, so why not just do it real time like you do it right here? So what's the advantage in training and, and mapping the arena? Um, so now we are only detecting people. Um, um, so we do not need any uh, additional information about the environment. We don't, know, we don't need to know where the kitchen is, where 
certain cabinets are. Um, so there's no need for the world model right now in this challenge, but we do need that information in the other challenges. Yeah, okay, so in a household environment, when you get a command to go to the kitchen, it's not very handy to go around the house trying to determine what the kitchen is, but you have to know it before you get the command. Basically. I think that's way more efficient. Yeah, yeah, maybe it is, yeah. So the robot is, I think it tries to communicate with the with the referee, I call him the bartender in this channel. Yeah, this is the this so is the barman. Yeah, the barman. And uh, I think they are trying to figure out what the exact command is that they get. So yeah, the, our robot is asking a lot of guidance, and also uh, I saw that you have to like tap the the gripper as a positive feedback to for the next command. Yeah, uh, there are certain uh, HSR teams that use um, uh, some force sensors in the wrist of the robot to detect uh, if somebody is touching it and use that as a signal um, to either start the challenge or to continue at some point. Um, I think you decided to put in a time a timer. Yeah, we are for, uh, for somebody to to do the, the things that it is asking from a human. Yeah. Um, um, especially when the, the barman is like putting in the, the items in the basket, um, it really depends on the items that he's putting in, how much force you're going to feel. Um, so that's really hard to decide and get robust. So we decide to take a timer there. Might not be the most elegant solution, but it's really robust. And for a competition, um, I think it's a good solution. Team is uh, signaling the referee, but yeah. the re this uh, the referee I think is very strict. Yes, um, your honours is very so strict. Yeah, there is no way to manipulate the ref in any way. Uh, he no, did, uh, so uh, do the commands, and he gave the the uh, what is it, a basket or a box? I think it's a, it's a wooden box. Yeah, so it to the uh, to the robot. Oh, uh, this is a shame. Um, yeah, so the rule is uh, teams are not allowed to instruct the referee about what to do. The referee is going to decide for himself. Um, and otherwise, the robot should tell the referee what to do and how to do things. Yeah. Um, the robot was not explicit enough in what to do, so Johannes decided to mount the box in the gripper in a different way than the team and the intended team to do. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, and I think now the force on the wrist became too much uh, because of the incorrect mounted uh, okay, okay. box. Yeah. Uh, therefore, it's not going to work anymore, I think. Yeah, so the gripper, what can it hold? It's like a couple of kilos? Uh, I think the documentation says 1.5 kilograms. That's really, uh, really low. Uh, that's and not that much. And you put a drink inside as well. Yeah, so it's indeed not that much. Uh, the cans are full, right? It's a full yeah, can the, the cans are full. Uh, there's a bottle of orange juice. You can even have uh, maybe a bottle of red wine. Um, but that's, that's over a kilo. A glass bottle of red yes, wine, definitely. Right? So um, ah, the team has to stop. That's unfortunate. Of yeah. course, there's a difference if if the robot is holding the bottle of wine directly, yeah. then it's really close, or close to the wrist. Yeah, uh, close yeah. to the wrist. But if you so put it in a basket, uh, there's more length, so that's gonna uh, apply more yeah. force, more so torque. The center of gravity is important uh, when you when you yeah. apply it on the on the gripper. So in this case, the skewness of the of the box made center of gravity stick outside of the gripper which has a higher torque on the wrist which is not a, yeah. not a good idea for, for these robots at least. Right. Uh, just like if you're trying uh, to bend a long stick, see if your distance is very small, it's very yeah. hard to bend it. If you take a longer distance it's much easier to bend because you're applying way more torque. Yeah. Uh, and that's caused the, the wrist to say, this is too much, I stop. So that's sad. Uh, and that's why in a lot of challenges, when we want the operator to give something to the robot, we show pictures on the screen how it should be done. Okay. To prevent any situations like this. Yeah, the referee is very, very uh, analytical. Basically, he tries to be a robot himself and... and 
Yeah, the terminal translates the commands in a very basic way, so no yeah. interpretation, interpretation of how it should be done, and uh, that makes it difficult. So, of course, any human will have a different idea on what the robot is asking. So, uh, how do you how do you tackle that? So, how do you give your commands to a human being? It, you you say you use pictures. I think that speaks for a thousand words, so that will help yeah. a lot. But do you do it in a very robotic way? So simple commands: so do this, do that, or is it in a in a friendly voice trying to explain? Please, can you put the coke and the basket in such a way that I do not fall over? Or <laughs> yeah, always. You of course you don't want to be talking for for minutes. Um, uh, we have a time limit, so you still want to keep the commands short, uh, but very clear and still friendly. So always use please. That's going to help. Uh, and indeed, explain pictures or explain. Do this. Put this upright in my gripper. Yeah. Because yeah, the referee um, should judge in a way and act in a way that it's not thinking for himself too much yeah and now again uh, the, the, the uh, barman manipulated the gripper the robot is starting to move around trying to determine where he is and oh the yeah, it hit the table no, so no, no no it was not no it, just it did, not hit, did not hit the table but we can the people uh, should keep standing over there because if they start moving they are influencing the challenge and that's not allowed only the referee is allowed to walk around. Okay. Oh, it will bump into the... No. Yeah, there are some cables no, no, just no, no, at no, the bar no, table, no. so that's a very difficult situation. Yeah, we want, put, want to put our camera cables across the uh, challenge room, but we thought maybe that's not a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> so we have very long cables all around. Just put oh, a box of cables a, in the middle. A, a chair in the way. Let's see how this robot sounds. Yeah, here. it seems that there can be chairs in restaurants. Yeah, insane. So Hero uh, doesn't care. No. He moves around, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I just drives around the uh, chairs. How long uh, are you allowed to map out the environment or detect your your, uh, your movement? Can you just take like minutes or do you... Well, need to during the challenge. You yeah, mean if, if the customer is waving and you detect, hey, there he is. We have to be there within like 30 seconds or a minute, or can you take like five minutes to reach the? So the, the entire customer. time for the challenge is set to 10 minutes. Um, okay. As you're allowed to uh, serve two guests, you don't want to take more than like five minutes per guest. So that means driving uh, to the guest mm. to take the order, uh, okay. drive back to the bar, yeah. drive Very back quickly. Yeah. 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 So it takes a lot of time. Okay. So um, it's actually, it's standing pretty far away, and I think the rule is to have to make eye contact, which it is doing. So, oh, it's showing QR codes. Uh, are these QR codes? Uh, yes, these are QR codes. Um, is now a team member is now manipulating the. Yeah, we're doing a lot of intervention the of the yeah. team member um, on how the, the uh, QR codes yeah. should be shown to the robot so this is definitely something to uh, this will be uh, discuss points uh, uh, deducted right um, the team member is assisting the robot I think yeah so the they robot. have an uh, alternative way of communication and uh, that's yeah. allowed it will give you a penalty um, now even two team members <laughs> uh, but i think there's too much interference um, either the i think if you're a are using a different wave communication you should instruct the referees uh, on how to use it but not be in the arena itself um, so this is an a point for discussion uh, why uh, why would you use QR codes is that because the team is not certain they can understand the customer or get the order uh, yeah I I assume uh, their uh, speech recognition is not robust enough in this noisy environment and therefore they choose to um, use a different way of communication, um, the QR codes.
So I de detect something and, uh, and now it will be moving. Ooh, the chair just moved a little. Yeah, so they, uh, they have been on the edge. Uh, they have slightly touched the table, I think. Uh, they have touched the chair twice. Uh, there's a lot of interference with team members. So, um, yeah, we want to play a fair game. Uh, so we're going to yeah, discuss yeah. what's going on with this score. And this is the Eraser Puma team? Yes, this is the Eraser team Puma team. Working uh, across a long distance together? Yeah, I'm so actually it's interested. It's what they are doing. Uh. I'm interested to um, to get to know how they uh, manage their uh, collaboration. Yeah, I it think would be logical that they have some kind of digital twin, maybe, or maybe they have two robots which can actually be operated on both sides with the same code. Yeah, they could so share the code. Of course, the sharing the code is not that difficult over a long distance. Yeah. Uh, I assume they both have their own robot. Uh, and only one of them brought the robot uh, to the tournament. They only have one robot here? Yeah, they only have one robot oh. here, I think. So the robot is uh, trying to grab the attention of the bartender, or at least trying to find the bartender. No, it already, uh, already oh, got, it a, it's got order. the drink. Oh, yeah. it was, I was not it's collected the order, and it's now on its way back to the customer. Mm. Though it seems to have trouble there navigating. Is there is a table. Yes. Yeah, now it is moving into the table. Ah, that's unfortunate. They were on the edge, but now they went over. Yeah, they are fully over the edge. Still, I think looking uh, at uh, at the other at the other challenges, they did very well in this challenge. So next voyage here will be Arpit. We have exchanged team members again. Hi, Arpit, welcome back. Hi. Did you uh, look at the challenge right now? Yeah, yeah I looked at the challenge right now. Uh. So they were uh, they were on the edge with uh, which uh, uh, navigation through through the restaurant. Yeah. And then in the end, they still bumped into the table, which basically they, they saw correctly uh, the first time they were there. Yeah. So does the robot remember that there is a table? Because now in the end, it forgot that there was a table. That's what, how it looks like. Or yeah, well, uh, what must have happened is with the, with, with the amount of people around it uh, at the entrance, uh, the, the laser points uh, that the robot has registered, they might have been slightly off. So when the robot went back to its uh, starting point, it could not localize correctly uh, against the, the artifacts that it made in the map. And yeah, that's because uh, that because of that, it's not able to f uh, navigate around the table and just bump into it. So I thought the table was in a different position? Maybe, yeah. as like, like slightly away from what it really was. Yeah, right, yeah. So we're now uh, uh, looking at a, a pepper robot. Have to go uh, up it or, uh, no, no, I'm going to stay here because uh, we have been asked to stay here with the robot and with the team member at least. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but we are not going to have a second one for ourselves. We no. we, we, we 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 get a perfect score. Uh, we cannot do anything more than that. I also looked at the rule book, checked out all the bonuses and everything. Uh, You're yeah. okay with? That. We are okay with it. Okay. Yeah. We we should I be getting. I got the wrong robot then. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Okay. This is uh, apology. <laughs> <laughs> Apologies. Uh, we apologies. We should be getting two thousand points for this. So we're looking at a pepper robot right now. Yeah. Do you know anything about the pepper robot? I know we have one uh, at uh, at the robotic labs at the Technical University uh, in Eindhoven. Correct. Do you know anything about this robot? Yeah, I mean, uh, this is the, it's a very cute robot. Uh, I would say it's cuter than this our. Looks like a like a waiter at least. Huh? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, seeing this at a restaurant would definitely make me happy. Yeah, there are restaurants that use robots already, yeah, in, in real life. Have you ever been to a restaurant that uh, that use robots for? I have been to a restaurant that has uh, that that uses robots, but those robots do not look as cute as this. No, <laughs> but they are damn fast. They are definitely done. I, uh, I think they are mainly used uh, to clean up. Yeah. And uh, not really serve drinks. I'm not, not entirely sure, but with that, uh, if, you, if you if you would have to build a robot with only one task in a specific restaurant, would, would you be able to make that like a really robust robot? So this challenge was perfect for you guys, but is that something that you would safely be able to implement? Uh, 
for one specific I, task. Yeah, for, for let's say tomorrow a company calls you and says, please program me a robot that I can safely use in all my restaurants all over the world. I won't uh, say a name, but maybe something with a yellow M, something like that. Yeah, I mean, why not? We can. We, can. we definitely can. At least to make a robo waiter, which is capable of uh, detecting the customer that it needs to go to and uh, yeah, serve the, the food to them, we can definitely make that. Okay. Uh, so I'm not sure exactly what's going on here, but I don't think that the challenge will start with this pepper robot. Um, but I also see other teams going back. I think uh, uh, it's finished right now for all the teams. It looks like it's it's done. Uh, you go and uh, check. Yeah. And uh, just uh, give me a signal if you know uh, what's going on. Definitely. Yeah. See you in a bit. Bye. Yeah, we are trying to figure out if the if everything is uh, is done. Uh, I think the referee told some guests that the, the the main challenge is open, but I think that, that this pepper robot is being rebooted so they can have another go. Um, I think it's the only pepper robot right now, and uh, the rulebook uh, states that all robots have to be uh, at the restaurant for the entire challenge. Um, and the the reason for this is that the teams uh, don't get an unfair advantage um, moving moving over back to the arena and uh, doing some uh, some testing. So I'm uh, trying to get a shot of the the pepper robot. Crowds are also all also moving in because. People are leaving. Let me see if we can find the robots. There it is. Ah, yeah. Pepper is waking up. And uh, yeah, just to maybe uh, while we wait, give you a shot of our robot hero who is standing here with me, waiting to get back to the arena with this basket. And there we have Apit as well. Let me just get the shot back to the pepper robot. Let's see how they are doing. Up it. You know what's yes. going on? 
Yeah, so uh, the, the runs for DSPL are over. So we are we have been asked to just yeah do whatever we want, take the robot back, okay. get back no. to the arena, start testing. That's what we're going to do. And I think the just the peppers are remaining. Uh, I think one or two of them are trying to participate. Only one is trying to participate in this. Okay. After this, this challenge is done. Yeah. All right. So now we'll stay with this pepper challenge and then uh, we will end uh, this live stream for today. Thank you.